teach a small course in a module in the beginning of the year and I teach uh, a very large class in the second half of the year. And even with the small class, it's very difficult to gauge what they understand and what they don't understand. And with a lot of uh, disciplines in biology and genetics, the first study unit is the foundation for the second one. So if you lose them in the first study unit, they're not going to understand anything else you do for the rest of the semester. And when you've been doing it for a while, some things are just obvious to you, but they're not obvious to a student who hasn't been exposed to this for 20 years. So it's very important to gauge. You can check and see, okay, they've got that, I can move on, or they haven't got that, we must spend a bit more time on that. So without a clicker, you're very much working blind. You don't know what they understand and what they don't understand. With a clicker, you can assess that everybody is on the page you want them to be on before you move on to something that may be a little bit more challenging for them to understand. First of all, I had all the students in class, so now I could actually see the engagement happening. So students were definitely listening to what I was saying because they expect to find a question within the next few slides. It makes the students a little bit more animated. They get to push a button. When we use peer instruction, they actually get to talk to each other. So they get to know their friends. What I find, especially with the big classes, the students are very um, reserved. They don't want to draw attention to themselves. They don't want to make a spectacle of themselves in front of their peers. So in this way, it's, it's fun. So we all kind of relax a bit. Um, so they, they relax, so they can ask questions afterwards. It introduces the option, the forum for asking questions. It's not just randomly raising your hand and asking a question and the whole class looks to see who's answering this question. So that's, that's very good. It, it opens up the whole process of discussion and, and, and I have arguments with the students about the answer. And then everybody eventually is richer for that experience. Also in a large enrollment class, to be able to um, make sure that the students are in class and to track student attendance. And you have the option of saying that you are not attending class and it's going to influence your marks. For me it was difficult to really know if the students understand the work because if you ask them, most of the time they would just go, Ugh. <laughs> so you would get the idea that some of them would understand and Hopefully they did, but now with the clickers, I can test whether they do un understand the concept and I can test it in more than one way. So that really made a difference in terms of um, my teaching approach and to make sure that they actually do understand the work. I give them a, a clicker question, now they're on the spot. They have to say, okay, do I know the answer? Am I sure I know the answer or am I just guessing? And it also, if they get it wrong and they were certain they knew it, then it, it brings the message home to them, wait a minute, I need to get some assistance here. If somebody's talking, I can't identify who's talking because it's just a sea of faces. So I have absolutely no idea whether they understand me, whether they're concentrating, whether I've talked right over their heads. So it's, it's much better if you have some form of participation, some sort of rapport with the students where there's a give and take. It, it shifts the emphasis of understanding onto the student. Does the student understand? Not, am I, have I, did I do a good job of explaining that concept? Because I really don't know. I'm not receiving that explanation. I get feedback and the students get feedback. Instead of you asking them, do you understand and getting these, hmm, you now know, okay, they don't understand. And you can use what they don't understand in the subsequent classes. You can do it again. Um, I structure my tutorials around what they don't understand in class. And they also tend to be a little bit more open with questions. They'll stop you because they know a question is coming and they want to know what is going on. Formative assessment for students is very important. You can't expect them to go through a whole semester and then only write a test at the end of the semester and then find out that they don't understand. So the formative assessment that you have in class, that immediate feedback, immediately, I pressed the button, it was the wrong button. Oh goodness, I should either ask someone or go and study some more is invaluable for the students, especially with the fact that they have other technology where they can actually go and look for the answers while they are busy doing this. So the formative assessment and that instant feedback is brilliant. You can structure your lecture around difficult concepts. You don't have to teach everything. You teach what they don't understand. 
So you don't bore them with irrelevant stuff, but you get an impact with the little bit of time that you actually have with them. It just makes the class just so much more fun. Then instead of just standing there talking or explaining, there's this interaction, especially in the large classes. You're not teaching your students blind. You know what is going on. They know what is going on. So it makes the, the process of teaching easier and more understandable for the students. <laughs>
very important. And then also to test the concepts, whether they do understand it or not, for you as a lecturer as well. And that also um, guides me in the way that, I present, that I'm presenting my classes and how much of the work I can cover so that the students still do understand it. And as a lecturer, I think that is the most important thing, is you, you do want to see what difference it makes. Um, for you standing in front of a class lecturing, as opposed to the students that just going to the library and reading through the textbook. When a university is making a selection, choosing a service provider, they should bear in mind that different disciplines have different requirements. So you should be able to operate a cell phone, a basic clicker that does multiple choice, or a more advanced clicker that gives you numerical answers or word answers within the same system. So regardless of what the student has, as a result of whatever subjects they take, they can all sit in the same lecture venue and respond to the questions. There's a, a big emphasis on using smartphones instead of clickers. Everyone thinks, you know, most of the students have smartphones, we should do that. The problem with that is we have students who don't have money for food. They do not have a smartphone, but they do have a bursary that will pay for their clicker. So they can participate using their bursary money. We cannot move strictly to, to cell phones. I think we need a system that if, should the infrastructure come into place, we can use both a cell phone system, a smartphone, as well as a clicker. And that is what we have with the system we're using currently. When we started looking for clickers, I emailed quite a few companies asking, are you interested? And Participate came back immediately. They said, we will see you tomorrow and we will help you. And when you're busy, you don't want to struggle, and we didn't have to. We had good support, you guys helped us so much, and you were like instant. And if we needed something, you helped us instantly, which in this environment is invaluable. We don't have time to struggle, we're working on tight deadlines, so this was great.